today we're going to be talking about dividing polynomials. And our first example, and this example happens when you have a monomial or a polynomial of one term in your denominator. And there's really two different options that you can use to simplify these. The first option is factoring out the GCF from the numerator. So I know for sure I have a 5. Now the GCF with your exponents, you have to look at the exponents and you have to take the lowest exponent. So my lowest exponent is 1, so it's just an A I can factor out. And our lowest exponent on the B's is also 1. So we factor that out and then we are left with A minus 3 B squared plus a 2 a squared b to the third all over 5ab now because I have this 5 times a times b being multiplied to this trinomial and I have this also the same thing in the bottom we can just cancel that Another option you have is break up the numerator. Since the numerator is all being added or subtracted, you can break up your numerator over what is in the denominator. Just make sure the denominator goes with each one of the terms because that denominator is common to all of our terms. Okay, so the fives cancel. The a and the a squared cancel, so I'm left, left with an a. The b's cancel. 15 and 5 cancel, so I have a 3. a's cancel, and your b's cancel to be a b squared plus a 2 a squared b to the third. And that's what I got over here. So I got, luckily, I got the same thing both times. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing long division with polynomials. So I want to review with you guys long division. Okay, so 23 goes into 145 six times. You take the 6 and you multiply it to the 23 and we get 138. And then remember you subtract. So I get 7 and remember you bring down the 3. 23 goes into 73 three times. 30 times 23 is 69. And then again, we subtract and we get 4. Bring down your 8. 2 goes into 48 twice. We multiply and we get 46. 27. I go into that once. 1 times 23 is 23. My remainder is 4, so we get 6, 3, 2, 1, with a remainder of 4 over what we divided into. Okay, so now using long division, and if I say use long division, you have to use long division. So we have x minus 5 on the outside, and on the inside we have x squared minus 2x minus 15. So now here, to figure out what goes up here, take your first term here, x squared, and divide it by this term x, and simplify, and we get an x. That's what goes up here. Another way you could think about that is you could think about what times x is going to get me x squared. So that what that was up here, x times x gets me x squared. So you multiply that x to both terms. Also make sure you multiply it to the 5. That's a common mistake that I find guys do. Now remember you're subtracting. What I like to do is I like to change all the signs and then add. Your first term should cancel. If they don't, you've done something wrong. So then we get a 3x, bring down the 15. Now again, take this first term, 3x, divide it by your x. The x's cancel, so I know that I have to have a plus 3 up top. 3 times x is a 3x. 
3 times negative 5 is a negative 15. Again, I like to think about it as subtracting, so I change all the signs and add. The three X's cancel. Again, those should cancel. And luckily, those cancel, so we have no remainder. So your answer is just X plus 3. Now, a different example. What this means is this really means a squared minus 5a plus 3. Remember, negative exponents go in the denominator, so I have 2 minus a, which is the same thing as a squared minus 5a plus 3 divided by 2 minus a. Okay, so simplify or use long division. I should say divide using long division. The a plus 2 goes out in front. Notice how I switched the location of those so that the, the variable was out in front. And then I have an a squared minus 5a plus 3. Now again, do your a squared divided by a negative a. That simplifies to be a negative a. So I have a negative a out front. Negative a times negative a is a positive a squared minus 2a. Again, remember to multiply the 2 times that term. Again, you're subtracting. You're subtracting this whole thing. So what I like to do is I like to think about it like this. I don't put in those parentheses because I would often forget to subtract. What I do is I do a negative outside. I change that sign. I basically distributed that negative that was there before the parentheses. Those cancel as they should um, and then we have a minus 5a plus 2a, negative 3a. So now go again, go over here, negative 3a divided by negative a. That is a positive 3. Don't forget to bring down this 3. So my positive 3 goes up front. 3 times negative a is a negative 3a. 3 times a 2 is a 6. Again, change all your signs. Okay, this is a negative that I'm going to distribute, so change all those signs and add. Those go to 0. I have a negative 3. So negative 3, that's our remainder. So we have a negative a plus 3 minus 3 over a negative a plus 2. Now, there's a shorter way to divide using what we call synthetic division. And please write down these steps. I'll be looking for these steps in your notes. So you write the coefficient of the dividend, which is this piece, the piece that goes underneath that division sign, so that the degree and the terms are in descending order. So you start with the highest to the lowest. If you're missing one, so if you jump from like an x squared down to, I'm sorry, an x to the third, and then your next term is x, you'd have to put in a zero coefficient for the x squared. And I'll do an example of that. I call it a placeholder. Write the constant of r of the divisor, x minus r. Make sure it's in that form, x minus r, in the box. Now multiply the first coefficient by r. Um, and you guys will see what these steps mean, hey, okay, here in a minute. So what I do, this is in the form x minus r. And this has to be a linear term for synthetic division to work. By a linear term, the highest power is 1. So I put the 5 there because I put the r. Make sure it's in x minus r in the box. Now I put all of my coefficients. So I put 1, negative 2, negative 15. Draw a little line. Now, bring down the first coefficient. So you slide down the 1. Multiply the first coefficient by r. 1 times 5 is a 5. Then we add them. So negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3. 3 times 5 is a 15. 
then we add them and we get zero. I always do a little dashed line here because your last one tells you that this is the remainder. Okay, in terms of the coefficients here, I started with an x squared, and then that was my x term, and that was my constant term. When you go through synthetic division, your answer has your powers reduced by 1. So if I started with an x squared, this now turns into an x plus 3. So my answer is x plus 3. Now hopefully you guys realize that's the same example we had there. So it's the same thing as the previous example. Okay, another example. And this one has some tricks to it. Make sure you make this x minus a negative 2 because it has to be in the form x minus r. So the negative 2 goes in a box. My x to the third term. My coefficient there is 1. My x squared term, my coefficient is 4. There is no x to the 0 term. Or I'm sorry, x to the first term, so I need to put in a 0. I call that the placeholder. So you need to have a coefficient for every single one of your terms. If you don't have one of those terms listed, you have to put in a 0. Then we have a negative 4. Okay, rolling through. Bring down the 1. 1 times a negative 2. Negative 2. Adam. I think of my good friend Adam. I wonder if I have an Adam this year. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. Adam. So we have a negative 4. That is a positive 8. The last one gets me my remainder, which is 4. So I started with an x to the third. These are the coefficients now. I started with x to the third, so this is my coefficient for my x squared term. So I have 1 x squared plus a 2x minus a 4 plus a 4 over what I divided by, x plus 2. And there's a sleeping cat for those of you doing double time. All right, synthetic division. Now, if this coefficient, this coefficient has to be 1. If it's not, divide every term by that coefficient. Okay. So now, our new problem is this. I have a 2y cubed minus a 3y squared minus a 2y minus a 1 half divided by y minus 1 half. Again, this term has to have a coefficient of 1, the linear term, the first term in your linear. So we put our 1 half in our box. I don't need any placeholders, so I just write my coefficients because I have, I start with an y to the third, and I have, I go 3, 2, 1, and then technically that's 0. Okay, bring down your 2. 2 times 1 half is 1. Adam. That's going to be a negative 1. Adam, so that's a negative 3. Then I have a negative 3 halves. We add them, so negative 3 halves, that's a negative 2. So what we have here, we started with a y to the third, so this is 2y squared. You reduce your power by 1. 2y minus 3 minus a 2 over, because usually it's plus, but because of that negative, y minus 1 half. Now we can't mix in this remainder piece. We can't mix a fraction and a fraction. So what I have to do is I have to multiply by something on the bottom that's going to get rid of that fraction. So I multiply by 2, what's ever in my denominator, and I have to multiply the top by 2, because I'm really then multiplying by 1. So then we have 2y squared minus a 2y minus a 3 minus a 4 over 
a 2y minus 1. And we are done. And that is our final answer. Back to the sleeping cat for those of you really paying attention. There are your lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.